Oh, good evening. I'm going to turn the other microphone on or you might not hear me. So it is so good to gather together with you this evening. Um, I think that the weather may be keeping a lot of folks away and at home for fear that the storm will hit while they're in church. And so uh, my suspicion is that a lot of people will participate online. And so I know that if you are going to be participating online, I want to encourage you to still do all of, participate in all of the pieces of the service this evening. And I know that you will not have ashes at home because we didn't have an opportunity to distribute them to people. And so if you are at home and you do not have ashes, I want to encourage you to still mark your forehead, even if you use just plain olive oil will at least resemble the same the same thing and so again welcome to our ash wednesday service have you ever played the game of scrabble scrabble right we're northern minnesota people we play, play scrabble all winter long and my suspicion is that with this storm there'll be some folks playing scrabble and so we have our own Scrabble pieces up here this evening. If you have played Scrabble, you likely drew a hand of letters at some point that didn't easily spell out anything, at least not right away. That's always my luck. You had to search for opportunities to connect with a missing piece to make sense of what you actually had in your hand. Lent has traditionally been a time of searching for what is missing. This year, we will admit that we have often been looking for love in all the wrong places. As the song goes, anyway. I said that, and I want to know how many of you sang that in your head. Yeah, right? So, so the song goes, we're looking for love in all the wrong places. And we are going to hear what the scriptures have to tell us about where love can truly be found. We come this evening with our hearts wide open and our minds awake. Ash Wednesday is a marker of the beginning of the Lenten journey, the journey of self-reflection and discernment originating in the 11th century of the church. The journey of repentance is about turning around. The origin of the word Lent is turning around. So that we might be in a right relationship with God. In a sense, we are looking for love once again. When we look to God for love, not simply for the approval of others, we start with our own turning. We participate in the turning around of the world. I would like to invite you to please stand as you are able as we begin our time together this evening with our welcome. The words are spoken responsively. You will find them written in your bulletin. I will read the italicized words if you would respond with the bolded words. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. God's mercy endures forever. I invite you to remain standing as you are able as we enter into a time of confession and assurance. The words are spoken responsively and they too are written in your bulletin. I will speak the italicized words if you would respond with the bolded word. Let's pray together. Let us join together in opening our hearts to the love of God before we even utter a word. We can be assured God will offer us grace and a way forward. For this season, we can be honest with what pains us most about our own thoughts and actions. Let us pray. Holy and merciful one, in this season of discernment, we come bringing our deepest longings and our failed attempts at satisfying them. 
We have often looked for love in things that cannot give us love. We yearn for lives that matter. We desire relationships that thrive. We want less regret. At times, we fail to see that you have already given us what really matters, your love and acceptance. You provide opportunities all around us to make a difference in the lives of others. You give us a fresh start each day, inviting us to do better. In this silence, we bring to you our pleas for openness to a different way of living. Friends, be assured by the psalmist who says, God has mercy according to God's steadfast love. Let us respond together. We open our hearts, our minds, our souls, our vision to the ways of love created by God, embodied in Jesus, and already moving in us by the Spirit. We are forgiven, loved, and freed. Amen. Please remain standing as you are able. And if you would sing with me the song, Create in Me a Clean Heart, you will find the words are written in your bulletin. Please be seated. Our Old Testament reading this evening comes from the book of Joel, chapter 2, verses 1 and 2, and then we skip down to verses 12 through 17. Blow the trumpet in Zion. Sound the alarm on my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, tremble for the day of the Lord is coming. It is near. A day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and thick darkness, like blackness spread upon the mountains. A great and powerful army comes, their like has never been from of old, nor will be again after them in ages to come. Yet even now, says the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning. Rend your hearts and not your clothing. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, abounding in steadfast love, and relenting from punishment. Who knows whether he will not turn and relent and leave a blessing behind him, a grain offering and a drink offering for the Lord your God. Blow the trumpet in Zion, consecrate a fast, call a solemn assembly, gather the people, consecrate the congregation, assemble the aged, gather the children, even infants at the breast, let the bridegroom leave his room and the bride her canopy. Between the vestibule and the altar, let the priests, the ministers of the Lord weep, let them say, spare your people, O Lord, and do not make your heritage a mockery, a byword among the nations. 
Why should it be said among the peoples, where is their God? And our gospel reading this evening comes from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 6, verses 1 through 6, and then we'll skip down to verses 16 through 21. Concerning almsgiving, beware of practicing your righteousness before others in order to be seen by them, for then you have no reward from your Father in heaven. So whenever you give alms, do not sound a trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, so that they may be praised by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your alms may be done in secret, and your Father, who sees in secret, will reward you. Concerning prayer, and whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, so that they may be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your father who is in secret, and your father who sees in secret will reward you. Concerning fasting, and whenever you fast, do not look somber like the hypocrites, for they mark their faces to show others that they are fasting. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward but when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face so that your fasting may be seen not by others, but by your father who is in secret and your father who sees in secret will reward you. And finally, concerning treasures. Do not store up yourselves treasures on earth where moth and, dust cons moth and rust consume and where thieves break in and steal. But store up yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust consumes and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. It's very rare. Honestly, it's the first time ever that I'm going to even attempt to preach a sermonette on Ash Wednesday. But our worship series that we're going to enter into calls for a sermon. And I said, you're not getting a sermon. You're getting a sermonette. <laughs> because as I thought about it today, there's a storm brewing. And <laughs> we, want to, we want people to get home safely. But I, I jotted a few words down on paper this afternoon as I thought about um, Ash Wednesday and what it means in regards to love and, and uh, turning our hearts. And, and as, I, as I read these passage, passages of scripture, there's some really good information in here. And so frequently during Lent, in the readings in the Lenten lectionary readings, the words love and heart are often found there. The use of the word heart in the Hebrew text refers not so much to those emotions. You know, we think about heart and we think Valentine's Day kind of heart. We think about emotions, but that isn't what it means at all. What, what it refers to is our thinking and our reflecting is what the heart is talking about in these scriptures. The authors and the prophets, they are inviting us to put all of our thoughts in the direction of what really matters. That's what these Lenten scriptures from today forward, all through Lent, when we see the word heart, that's really what it's talking about. And then we think about repentance. You know, repentance and penitence is just synonymous with Lent and with Ash Wednesday. But repentance is actually the returning with our hearts. We are returning with our hearts to our God. And penitence, or to rend our hearts, those are the two primary themes that are present in Lent. And we can find them in our readings from Joel and Matthew today. 
We also hear a very clear warning about what the treasures are that we are storing up. As the gospel reading says, for where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. This is a key piece of the inspiration for the worship series that we are embarking on. The series is going to identify for us what we need to attend to, what we love, what we treasure, what do we treasure. Even now, return to me with all your heart, with fasting and weeping and mourning, invites our Lord, our God. Joel raises a really important point in this passage about repentance worth remembering. When we take the whole of this passage and hear, rend your heart and not your garments, we remember that repentance isn't just a transaction to right or wrong. Remember, God is not transactional. It's an action to restore a relationship. It's about restoring our relationship to God. Repentance isn't just about turning around or turning away from what we've done. But also, we are invited to turn back toward the one who loves us more than we can ever even comprehend. Eugene Peterson wrote the paraphrase, The Message. And in there, he puts this this way. Come back to God, your God, and here's why. God is kind and merciful. God takes a deep breath, puts up with a lot. This most patient God, extravagant in love, always ready to cancel the catastrophe. Love, especially the love of God, is present everywhere, even and perhaps especially in the midst of calamity, the calamity that often interrupts our lives. This calamity, as was the context of Joel's time in history as well. Matthew, Matthew's reading brings us to the theme of penitence and also hints at the primary ritual of this day, the placing of ashes on one's forehead. We're tempted sometimes on Ash Wednesday to go in the bathroom after the church service and wipe them off of our forehead because we don't want to put a hat on, right, because they're going to rub off on a hat. There's a whole, a whole host of reasons why people would wipe them off. We hear in this passage of scripture, though, about the ashes, encouragement to remember that repentance isn't just a show. It's a commitment. We encounter the tangible feeling of our decision to have our lives led by the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, seeing as he saw through the eyes of love and living as he lived, attending to what matters the most. The performance of our faith, not just the show of it, might be something worth nurturing towards a better and more healthy relationship. Love is found by simply turning back towards love's very source. That very source is God. The name of God or Jesus is often love. We are indeed looking for God when we are looking for love. A lot of people in our time don't understand what they're searching for. They know that they have a hunger for something and they can't fill it. What they're looking for is love. They're looking for the love that comes from our creator, from God. Lent is a time to make more room for God and assess what we understand to be treasures worth our time, our attention, and therefore our love as well. 
Lent is a time for us to return to the love that we are searching for always and to remember that no matter what we have done, no matter where we have been in life, that we can always turn back to God and that love flows out freely over us. Well, we're going to try something different this evening for our prayers. Julie's been, I probably threw her a monkey wrench. We are going to try something very different with our prayers. Typically, we respond with the words, hear our prayers, when you hear the words, Lord, in your mercy. But we're not going to do that tonight. We are going to return to something that has happened for years and years in the ancient church. The season of Lent always comes together around prayer using this ancient form from the church. The Greek words Kyrie eleison mean God have mercy on us. The church has been chanting this during prayer since the early centuries of its existence. You will find the words and the music are located in the United Methodist Hymnal. It's number 484. And I'd like to ask Julie to play it through for us once and we can practice it and, and then we can enter into a time of prayer where Kyrie Eleison will be our response. So after I play it through once, are we going to sing it? Yeah, do you want to play it through once and then we'll sing it once and then we'll pray? Do we think we have it? It's pretty simple, isn't it? All right. All right. Let, let's pray together. As we prepare to receive ashes, let us take a moment to contemplate the true treasures we have. What would be devastating to live without? Who are the people that grace our lives, miracles of presence? What are the purposes in our path that we would regret never doing? I want to invite you to write whatever comes to your mind and your heart in this moment. You will find a place to write on the back side of your bulletin, and I'm hoping that there are pencils in the pews if you do not have a pen. And, and so I want to take just a, a minute or two to allow you time to write and answer those questions. What would be devastating to live without? Who are the people that grace our lives, those miracles of presence? What are the purposes in our path that we would regret never doing? As you continue to think about those good and positive things, I want to also invite you to take a moment to list the things in your life that distract you, that steal your time and energy from your attention to these treasures, to this love. After a short time, Julie will begin to play the Kyrie Eleison and we will sing together. Holy and forgiving God, we beseech you, cry out to you to intervene in us this season. 
Help us create, create more attention to the places true love is found, in the treasures that are so abundant around us, given by you. We prepare our lives to be marked with the reminder that we were made from dust, and to dust we shall return. In this cross of ash upon our foreheads, may we commit to the heart-opening journey ahead of us as we consider that which gives us life and all that contributes to death. We know you are with us. This, this is the dust of dreams deferred, the ashes of burned bridges, the dust of worn out dead end paths, the ashes of destroyed relationships, the dust of years of accumulated unfinished business, the ashes of neglected passions. We are marked by both love and sorrow, dreams and disappointment, fear of death yet undying hope. We are wholly yours. We are yours, Holy One. Amen. I'd like to invite you to come forward to be marked with the ashes. While you are waiting to be served, I would ask you to please sing quietly, number 488, Jesus Remember Me. If you would please indicate when you come forward if you would prefer to be marked on the back of your hand or your forehead, I would really appreciate that. Come now to receive the mark of ash.
and as you are able. And if you would sing with me from the United Methodist hymnal number 399, Take My Life and Let It Be. Go forth into the world looking for love in all the right places, looking for signs of love, making the true treasures of your lives the center of your hearts. Amen. Go in peace to share the light and love of Jesus with the world. Amen.